Hi, welcome to our exploration of digital engagement aimed at healthcare providers. I'm Danny Flamberg and I lead the HCP team at LiveWorld. And I am fascinated as I hope you are by the idea of engagement, which in some ways is the most interesting and most productive part of the marketing process. You know, engagement is the connective tissue that links brand awareness with conversion and acceptance of new products and new treatments. So it really is the place where the rubber meets the road. Or if you like a COVID analogy, uh, engagement is the mRNA or the uh, vector vehicle for moving a message from general awareness to completed Rx or TRX. So in the next few minutes, we're gonna focus on engagement. We're gonna ask what it is, how do you use it? What do you do with it? And how does it affect your bottom line? And joining me today to discuss this are my colleagues, Don Lacolade, who's our chief, so chief of social strategy and our chief medical director, Umar Siddiqui. So we begin this exploration with a look, and this is probably a filter for everyone, with a look at how COVID has affected the marketplace and how it's shaped the environment for engagement. Thank you, Danny. So the COVID-19 pandemic has demonstrated the value of social media for HCP outreach. Remote and virtual engagement was previously reserved for other industries and professionals. But with the new ways of working, digital connection has been validated and adopted by HCPs and marketeers alike. Here we can see the impact to HCP marketeers, uh, such as the attention shifting suddenly online and virtual to social. We've seen an increase in 25 to 50%. Uh, what has that yielded? Increases in the value of social and digital programs and the value proposition around that. Also, we've seen healthcare embrace virtual telehealth by over 3,000 fold, and that is a tracking and monitoring of patients. So output from that, HCPs are adapting to new technology and also interaction and engagement skills with patients and their family alike. Uh, likewise, with closed offices, which has limited the flow to actually engage with HCPs and other allied health professionals like field teams, what we're seeing, we're seeing an increased reliance on virtual connections and delivery methods. Uh, suddenly the proliferation of Zoom and other meeting formats, as well as other technologies that are innovative. Uh, likewise, with uncertainty and financial pressures, we're seeing a reduction in risk tolerance and the appetite for such. So therefore we are seeing a little hesitation along in the pharma, uh, health science, life sciences industries from patients and HCPs alike towards embracing novel new investigational therapeutics. Next, we'll take a look at why and how we're engaging. So before we get too far into this discussion about engagement, I think it's really important for us to actually define what engagement is. It's one of those terms that everybody seems to know, but nobody seems to be able to define. So at its most basic, um, Merriam-Webster defines it as the involvement in an activity. Okay, that's pretty easy. Greatly interested, emotional involvement or commitment. And I think that emotional involvement or commitment is the part that really stands out to me. Um, these are the pieces that are critical to engaging and driving the behaviors that we're chasing with our marketing efforts. So how does this apply for digital and social? Well, for digital and social, we want to create programs that drive this kind of emotional involvement or this um, voluntary, um, meaningful contribution and participation in the programs that we create. And we have many examples of what that looks like in the coming slides. There are a ton of benefits for um, us in our marketing efforts for engaging an HCP audience. Um, it can drive a dialogue that illuminates and refines our messaging. It allows, in that same dialogue, it can allow peers to discuss topics um, that have a lot of brand value. You will see HCPs discuss why they elected to put their patients on a new treatment, why they didn't wait, what their um, patients' successes were like, um, if there were any concerns their patients had, how they addressed them. Um, we also see um, uh, HCPs who uh, react to patients bringing up a treatment and how they go through their consideration and they share and interact with that with each other um, in some of these um, walled gardens and spaces. And this gives this type of interaction is hugely valuable and it carries more weight if the interaction and the um, endorsement comes from a peer than it does if that same interaction or um, even the endorsement comes from the brand or a KOL. 
It also allows us to customize um, deeper campaign measures and materials that continue to progress the HCP past that initial awareness and down into that consideration set. So in order to get the greater involvement and emotional connection that Don mentioned, we've got to look at the context that HCPs are working in as we begin to try and engage them using a variety of different techniques. Next slide, please. So the, both sides, both the pharma marketer side and the HCP side have barriers to engagement. Some are natural, some are constrained, but there are challenges that affect both sides Engagement is not a slam dunk. It's not a magical kind of thing. It has to be brought to life in very specific ways. In terms of HCPs, we're looking at trying to hit a moving target where you're people who are active in a daily kind of way, we've got to follow them through time and space. We've got to understand their attitude. We've got to understand that the complexion of the HCP population is changing. They're younger, they're more diverse, they're trained differently than the general cadre of HCPs. We also have to understand that the work Flow and the lifestyle has changed. So many of our HCPs work in hospital systems, are using EHRs, are constrained by different kinds of workflow and work arrangements, and uh, have a fleeting interest. Remember, many of these people are seeing 20 and 30 patients a day. So their uh, openness and their ability to take in new messages and process new messages can be severely constrained, not to mention the fact that so many marketers are trying to get at them. The same holds true, and this is the next slide, the same holds true for pharma marketers. So many of us are putting out the same kind of messages, creating the same kind of content, uh, reaching out through email, using the same kind of channels, uh, using and abusing in some cases social media. We have in many cases not clear calls to action, and in many cases we focus too much of our budget on awareness and not enough on engagement and interaction. So there are barriers that we need to understand as we contemplate the total environment and the total experience based around engagement. And that leads us to kind of an engagement framework. So let's get really specific about what we're talking about around engagement. Um, as we look at this framework, as we look talk about engagement as a whole, there are activities that take less time for people um, to complete and also have less overall value to the brand. Um, as we look to the right on this chart, um, we can go ahead and keep building it. The, um, these activities, as we move toward the right, take more time investment, um, that meaningful voluntary participation that we talked about a minute ago. And they also have much more complex tasks, but all of that complexity means that they're more invested in the program or the message you're trying to deliver, and also that it has far more brand value. So as a, an engagement strategy, we want to take this into account in a number of different ways. First, we want to understand their, the customer journey, where an HCP starts in the consideration of a new drug or a new treatment, and where they end up in terms of making prescriptions and changing the way that they treat specific diseases. Part of this is then to focus on the target personalities and personas for each specialty. So dermatologists think dramatically different than cardiologists, rheumatologists think very differently than uh, than PCPs. So understanding the personalities and the targets and the specialties is incredible, where we're aiming to intersect or intercept them at a time when they're open to conversation. So when they're in the OR, there's no, no room for uh, interaction or interception. Uh, the other thing we want to understand, of course, is messaging to workflows and lifestyles. Each physician and each specialty has a different way of working a different time allocation. So one of the things we want to do on a strategic level in, in when we think about building it, it, engagement is to make tasks, make asks easy and familiar. Uh, we want to present them with things they already know. We want to be able to talk to them in small sound bites. We want to play to ego and emotion so that it breaks through their workflow. It breaks, it accounts for the fact that they're moving through time and space. It takes into account attitudes and previous behaviors so we increase the likelihood of being heard and being accepted. This also translates to the idea of measurement, measuring engagement, which we can break into three big buckets. Number one is site activity and most valued actions. These would things like 
bounce rates, time spent on site, click throughs, repeat visits, thing, uh, registrations, downloads, things that we can actively see where the interaction is taking place, where the engagement is beginning to be built. Second is in this conversational engagement bucket. As we communicate with HCPs, we wanna look at a number of things. Number one, the kind of comments and the quality of comments they make. Number two, the intensity of the conversation. Number three, the volume of the, uh, of the conversation. And lastly, are there endorsements? Are there doctors speaking up for us? One of the things we're finding, especially in social media, and in many cases in the walled gardens, are very robust conversations among, among physicians that yield interesting comments that endorse certain drugs, that accept or reject certain principles, that value or dis disvalue clinical information. So we wanna be able to collect that and look at that, why? So that we can influence the messaging and drive more progression through the funnel. Remember, we're talking about engagement as a connective tissue. So we wanna go from awareness to engagement. We want engagement to drive to conversion. And we wanna be able to understand what kind of messaging, what kind of frequency, what kind of ideas, what kind of memes are necessary to get that funnel uh, progression going. So let me turn to Umar, who's now gonna give us some examples of how to ignite these conversations and how to stoke engagement. Thank you, Danny. So we're gonna be taking a closer look on how HCPs are using social media and why. So HCPs have two primary outlets for social media the public platforms such as your Twitter, your Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook groups, and et cetera, and then also the peer-oriented closed platforms, which are much more specialized for healthcare conversations. HCPs look at online communities, boards, forums for information gathering, information sharing, whether it's with regards to a new drug, a case that they're managing, or a new professional opportunity or direction in their career that they're seeking. It's no longer just about self-directed education and training or a CME course, not even a Google search, but actually more of a crafted curated message from a community that's more personalized. So yes, HCPs are using public and private platforms. The peer-to-peer -peer communication definitely has enormous credibility and validation where there's that direct intimate conversations that are to the point and they're offline, so to speak, even though it is in the HCP community. Uh, each platform, as Danny mentioned, has its unique uh, advantages. Uh, some are a little bit more niche, others a little bit more of a best of, be best of breed solution, which offer a lot more features and a lot more capabilities. Uh, the timing and usage patterns definitely vary by specialty. What kind of break in the day does an HCP find? Also, how can they leverage their crowdsourced information best? Uh, it all really depends on what their general workflow is and what their curiosity is. So definitely there is that imperative and importance to take social listening into consideration from a marketeer point of view. So we're going to be looking at CERMO and then CERMO's robust advertising and different ways that it engages uh, the HCP community. So there is this active news feed where uh, discrete and directed advertising does take place. Uh, and this, once again, is very personalized and curated based on the specialization of the HCP. Uh, there's regular polls, surveys to engage the HCPs. And this is reminded through emails or little pop-up alerts as you go through the platform. What really comes uh, the focus within CERMO is their drug ratings tool. It is a very robust apparatus where you find many, many HCPs from all different disciplines coming in to use that tool, and then they stick around for the conversations. And this all centers around the clinical challenges because it's, as we know, medicine and healthcare, uh, it's an ongoing self-learning uh, discipline. So these clinical challenges ignite a lot of curiosity within the HCPs. We'll take a look at another example. So uh, there's also CERMO, I mean, SCIPTA after CERMO for HCP engagement. SCIPTA differs from CERMO in the sense of SCIPTA is uh, separated in different communities based on the specialization of the HCP. So which presents different omnichannel package capabilities. Uh, being curated by a uh, specialty for the HCP, you're more around your community, more of your tribe, so to speak. So you have different levels of conversation and relatability rather than just kind of uh, getting a very generalized message. This features more personalized case discussions that are more relevant. Also, there's a professional development and jobs board for career development, recommendations, and other insights of what's going on uh, within that specialization for that particular career path that the HCP is part of. And then there's also the gather online ad board 
uh, which is a very unique feature and offers a lot of versatility on how marketeers can engage ACPs. Uh, this leads us to Medscape. Uh, Medscape is different from the other two walled garden communities that we just uh, spoke of where it is public facing and it is more of a generalized but still focused uh, news and information gathering platform where published research uh, from uh, academic peer reviewed journals and other material is shared. Uh, there's definitely a linkage between CMEs where within HCPs going on to Medscape, previously it was more to get news, but then the ability to self-train and then do your uh, accreditations and your compliance, that was the original uh, sticky to get to Medscape. However, it's evolved now with the news feeds based on specialization and then also the broad content coverage where it covers multiple uh, groups, as I mentioned with the peer research, uh, what also you're seeing in uh, the media. Uh, also to keep uh, engaged, there's the clinical challenges. Uh, physicians are always drawn towards uh, broadening their horizons, self-learning and advancing their skills. So the clinical challenge is a big draw there. And once again, presents numerous opportunities for the marketeers through omnichannel packaging. So then this brings us to how quizzes, as we've noticed across the aforementioned platforms, is of interest to HCP engagement. So there's some interesting insights that we got from here. Obviously with these quizzes, you're not only just engaging the HCP, but you're also connecting with them in a certain way where it's eliciting an emotional response. HCPs are constantly in the information gathering learning mode. So therefore, due to the familiarity of the material, there's a a self sense of benchmarking that's taking place, a monitoring and measuring of your own metrics. There's also the curiosity of how other HCPs are performing and what's uh, curiosity for them in terms of social share. And then there's offers an opportunity as a back channel for education and further training. Uh, there's also the research or clinical data exchange where something gets it's highlighted that previously was not with the AP, just how they're inundated with so much other information. And then also allows a promotion of engaging in various congresses, conferences, other professional organizations, live or virtual. And the key takeaway from here, I'll let Dawn expand on this, is the results from this. So we've had phenomenal results using these quizzes. Um, and we can use them, uh, they can be deployed on a website, they can be um, teased in social, traditional open social media. They can also be um, displayed in several of the different gated platforms. Um, so there's plenty of different places. And of course, um, the one on the bottom here, they can be used as a way to draw people in to either your physical booth or your virtual booth at events and congresses. And that's one of the key things. We actually recently had one with a client where we were able to draw in far larger audience to play the quiz and challenge each other with the quiz than came in for any of the other offerings inside of the virtual booth. So, you know, quizzes are fun. Everybody has a positive feeling toward them where um, sometimes if you're trying to teach a, a um, a new topic, it's not as much fun if it's not in a format like a quiz. So we've just had a lot of, of great results with using the quiz to make our content stand out amongst all of the other content that HCPs are being somewhat bombarded with because we've all moved to virtual back to the COVID-19 reference that uh, Umar gave earlier. Um, so let's talk about video for a moment as well. Um, video um, continues to, and research continues to show that people connect with you when they can see you, when they can interact with you, whether that's in person or on video, there's much of the same interaction, the same um, connection, the same feeling that is elicited when we get to see people on video. It's been the most successful and continues to be the most successful content type across all platforms. It's also the most extensible type of content. Um, you can use it in longer format, you can do cut downs, you can include it and embed it in some of the content formats for the walled gardens. Um, you can cut it into, st into still images, use it as quote cards. There's all sorts of ways that you can use video footage. Um, so that's one of the key things is to um, craft your uh, social programs and your uh, digital programs uh, to engage people leveraging video. 
And finally, just wanted to tease you with a uh, concept that we use on the DTC side regularly, and that is to be where they are. Um, so whether that is adding chat to um, uh, your HCP homepage that allows you to uh, offer assistance or finding other ways where you can offer assistance or reduce the burden on either the HCP or their team um, or clinic. Uh, maybe you can help answer questions. Maybe you can help them with um, uh, um, deciding whether a product is right for their patient, but being there where they are at the moment where they're in that consideration path is hugely valuable um, and is something that we, should, we would challenge you to try. So now we've talked about engagement on a number of different levels. We, we covered what it is, why it matters, what are the barriers, what are the strategies, and how are people doing it? And so your question now at this point is, what do we do next? And, then, and the answer is move to close. So complete that linkage between awareness and, uh, and conversion. You wanna link the engaging activity to explicit next steps. So as my grandmother used to say, if you don't ask, you don't get. So you need to be very directive and you need to solicit feedback, schedule a follow-up, make an explicit offer, offer, make a very clear call to action, download this thing, watch this video, talk to Bob, all of these kinds of very directive kinds of things so that you move to close and complete that connective tissue from awareness to consider to uh, conversion. I hope you've learned in the last few moments some good ideas about engagement. I hope it motivates you to examine your engagement, engagement programs. And if we can be of help to you or answer any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks for your time and good luck.